Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Grace. My name is Scott Painter, and I serve as the vicar of the community that calls this space home, Grace Episcopal Church in Houston. It's a blessing for us to be able to gather in this way, and we especially want to extend a welcome to those who are visiting with us for the first or second time and say to you, we're glad that you're here and invite you to fill out a visitor card. You can find that form online by clicking the link in the comments that run alongside this video. It's a simple form that gives you an opportunity to let us know you were here today, to uh, call you back and share more about this congregation, and hopefully get a chance to learn more about you and the journey that brought you to worship with us this morning. Thanks again for coming together. Friends, let's take a moment and quiet our hearts and prepare for worship. Blessed be God, most holy, glorious, and undivided Trinity. And blessed be God to reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Oh, pray. 
be with you and also with you let us pray oh God you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity grant us the fullness of your grace that we running to obtain your promises may become partakers of your heavenly treasure through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever amen a reading from Philippians. Therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort in love, any sharing in the Spirit, any sympathy, complete my joy by thinking the same way, having the same love, being unified, and agreeing with each other. Don't do anything for selfish purposes, but with humility, think of others as better than yourselves. Instead of each person watching out for their own good, watch out for what is better for others. Adopt the attitude that was in Christ Jesus. Though he was in the form of God, he did not consider being equal with God something to exploit. But he emptied himself by taking the form of a slave and by becoming like human beings. When he found himself in the form of a human, he humbled himself by being obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Therefore, God highly honored him and gave him a name above all names, so that at the name of Jesus, everyone in heaven, on earth, and under the earth might bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my loved ones, just as you always obey me, not just when I am present, but, even, but now even more while I am away, Carry out your own salvation with fear and trembling. God is the one who enables you both to want and to actually live out his good purposes. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us say the psalm together. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. 
In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and elders of the people came to him as he was teaching. They asked, what kind of authority do you have for doing these things? Who gave you this authority? Jesus replied, I have a question for you. If you tell me the answer, I'll tell you what kind of authority I have to do these things. Where did John get his authority to baptize? Did he get it from heaven or from humans? They argued among themselves, if we say from heaven, he'll say to us, then why didn't you believe him? But we can't say from humans because we're afraid of the crowd, since everyone thinks John was a prophet. Then they replied, we don't know. Jesus also said to them, neither will I tell you what kind of authority I have to do these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. Now he came to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. No, I don't want to, he replied. But later he changed his mind and went. The father said the same thing to the other son who replied, Yes, sir, but he didn't go. Which one of these two did his father's will? And they said, the first one. Jesus said to them, I assure you that tax collectors and prostitutes are entering God's kingdom ahead of you. 
For John came to you on the righteous road, and you didn't believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes believed him. Yet even after you saw this, you didn't change your hearts and lives, and you didn't believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our salvation. Amen. In the Gospel of Matthew this morning, political leaders and their religious allies who currently hold tenuously to power in Jerusalem are very nervous about Jesus and how much people are gravitating toward him. As Matthew tells it, the encounter we see today occurs just a little less than 24 hours after Jesus first rode into Jerusalem on the back of a humble donkey to the cheers of adoring fans crowding in on the street that was his palm-strewn path. That day before, upon arriving in Jerusalem, Jesus went straight to the temple complex at the heart of the city, and he drove out the money changers and merchants who were there. He overturned their tables. He reminded them of the words of the prophets, my house shall be called a house of prayer. And then in that same temple, at the center of the life of the people and at the heart of their faith, Many people came to Jesus with ailments and disabilities, and he healed them. Right then and there, the blind and the lame made well, made whole. The people are very impressed with it all, and they begin shouting his praises and making big claims about who he must be. Hosanna to the son of David, a new king, a messiah. Or, depending on where you're standing, an existential threat to law and order, to authority. Simon Sinek, the author and speaker on leadership and management, talks about the difference between authorities and leaders. He says there is a difference between holding authority in a hierarchy and being a leader among people. He says this, leadership has nothing to do with rank. There are people who sit at the highest levels of organizations who are not leaders. We do what they tell us because they have authority over us, but we would never choose to follow them. He says at another time, to be a leader means one thing and one thing only. It means they have followers. A follower is someone who raises their hand and volunteers to go where you're going. They volunteer to go in the direction you're pointing. And so to lead others means you have a clear vision of a world that does not exist, a world that could exist. The authorities in the temple quickly see that Jesus is a leader whose presence has quickly begun to undermine their hierarchical authority. People are already following him. They are already catching his vision of what the world could be apart from the way powers have corrupted and take control of their way of life. And so they come to Jesus with a trick question. The authorities come to Jesus with a trick question, a question tailor-made for our own soundbite culture. By what authority are you doing these things? By what authority are you doing these things? By what authority are you cleansing the temple? By what authority are you healing the blind and the lame? If he answers one way, by God's authority, they'll be able to quickly seize on it 
frame it as blasphemy and engage in an effective character assassination. We cannot tolerate someone who thinks he's from God. He'll be banished or executed in no time. They'll twist his words to delegitimize him as a blasphemer and crush the hopes of the people for salvation. And if Jesus answers the other way, by my own authority, they can take him down for acting outside the station of a humble nobody from Nazareth. They'll twist his words to crush the spirits of the people and force them back into line. So Jesus doesn't answer their question. Instead, he takes those chief priests and elders and shines a light on their chronic fear and assaults on God's messengers whose ministries challenge their own authority. Did John baptize by human or heaven's authority? The leaders are stuck. Jesus has forced them into the same trap they were trying to force him into. If they answer by heaven's authority, then the leaders have no answer for why they ignored and persecuted John, heaven's messenger. And if they answer by human authority, they'll lose the crowd because they all believe with deep conviction that John was from God and they'll see that their leaders do not believe the same thing. So they refuse to answer Jesus' question and they say only, we don't know. Friends, this encounter we share with Jesus this morning, the exchange between the authorities over the people and Jesus with the people, is not just about the legitimacy of who Jesus is and whether or not he has the right to do what he's doing. The, this encounter is about the way of Jesus and how opposed it is to the powers that dominate life as we know it. How subversive the way of Jesus is to the authority of those who employ their power to dominate and coerce and make onerous demands on the rights of some to exist. Jesus is pointing to a different kind of world, to God's dream for the world. And if we dare, we may choose to follow him as our leader into the unknown, into a world that could be. Because he sees the possibility for goodness and justice and righteousness to reign, a world we can barely, if at all, imagine. The dream of God for this world is expressed in the story of Jesus. The writer of Philippians reminds us just how beautifully different this dream is, how radically beautifully different this dream is from the nightmare that life often is. The writer of Philippians says, though he was in the form of God, he did not consider e being equal with God something to exploit. Rather, he emptied himself by taking the form of a slave and becoming like human beings. When he found himself in the form of a human, he humbled himself by becoming obedient even to the point of death, even death, on a cross. And to follow Jesus looks like this. Don't do anything for selfish purposes, but with humility think of others as better than yourselves. Instead of each person watching out for their own good, watch out for what is better for others. Adopt the attitude that was in Christ Jesus. And this is what it looks like to follow Jesus as our leader. We're not following a coercive or demanding authority. Obedience is not being forced upon us. Certain actions are not being coerced or manipulated out of us. But the love, the care, the generosity, 
the goodness, the vision of Jesus invites us, invites us into the way of Jesus to give up everything for us to flourish and to follow is to adopt the same attitude, to seek to serve and not to be served, to seek to lift up and not to think myself better or more important, to choose a path of goodness for the sake of others. In these perilous times, may we have faith in Jesus and follow in his way. Amen. Let us affirm our faith, saying together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, you promise to hear us when we pray to you in faith with thanksgiving. We pray for one another, for our families and friends, through whom we learn to love and to be loved. Thank you for all who care for us. Give us grace to serve Christ by serving our neighbors and our community, loving us others as he loves us. God of grace, hear our prayer. We thank you for the unfailing love to hold out to everyone in Christ Jesus. Comfort and heal those in sorrow, need, sickness, or any other trouble. Give them courage and hope in their distress and bless those who minister to them. We pray especially for Cheryl, Alex, Lindsay, Penny, Nancy, Vion, Mary Lou, Dan, Fred, Marlene, Mark, Stephanie, Jason, Julian, Adam, Emily, Marty, Pauline, Louis, Avril, Edwin, Bob, June, and Eddie and for all those impacted around the world by climate change, for our nation as we prepare for an election, and for those we now name. God of grace, hear our prayer. We remember with gratitude your many gifts to us in creation. Help us and people everywhere to share with justice and peace the resources of the earth. Give wisdom to those in authority among us and to all leaders of the nations. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray for your church throughout the world, thanking you for all those who serve Christ and the kingdom. By your spirit, strengthen your people for their work and witness in the world. Unite us in your truth and love, that we who confess your name may also reflect your glory. God of grace, hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving all who have died in Christ, especially Jesse Gibson, and for those we now name. 
We rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we may enter with them into the unending joy of your heavenly kingdom. Merciful God, you look with compassion on all who turn to you. Hear the prayers of your people. Grant that what we have asked in faith, faith, we may may by your your grace receive receive through through Jesus Christ Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Now to God, who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or conceive by the power which is at work among us, be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all ages. Amen. Well, once again, I want to welcome everyone together today for worship. It's the 17th Sunday after Pentecost, but even harder to believe, it's the last Sunday in September. Amazing. My name is Scott Painter, and I serve as the Vicar of Grace, and especially if you're visiting with us today, I want to invite you to fill out a visitor card. You can find a link in the comments that run alongside this video. It'll take you to a place where you can let us know that you were with us today and share some information that helps us reach out to you. Would love to have the opportunity to share more with you about grace and to learn more about you and the story uh, that brought you to worship with us this morning. Thanks again for gathering with us. Friends, we have a couple of things coming up. One is our in-person worship is scheduled to be back on tonight at 5 o'clock. We've come through rain and wind and flooded streets. And now we will once again gather on the labyrinth for our evening worship in person. Reminder, there's a pre-registration that is required. Uh, It lets you answer questions about your health and lets us verify that no one with symptoms of COVID-19 are here in our gathering. Uh, We hope that you'll go to that link. It's also in the comments. It was also in the Grace Line uh, newsletter that went out at the end of the week. Uh, Go ahead and fill that out. It'll send a a report to us, and we'll know to expect you and make a place for you around the garden. Uh, Our worship together lasts for about 30 minutes. We'll have some reflective music. Uh, We'll have a short homily. We'll hear the scripture together, and we'll pray together. Uh, Look forward to this special opportunity that we have to gather. I also want to thank you for your continued faithfulness in giving and supporting this community during what has been a very difficult time, an unprecedented time for us uh, with the pandemic. Thank you for continuing your faithfulness. And we want to remind you that there's a place online where you can continue to give your offerings and give toward your pledge. Uh, and that is found online at graceinhouston.org slash giving. And you may also mail your offering to the church and that address can also be found on the screen. Let's continue in worship now. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. To 
His power, He has raised me to God be the glory for the things He has done. Just let me live. My life, let it be pleasing, Lord, to Thee. And should I gain any praise, let it go to Calvary with His blood. So with you. Let us pray as Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, our life on earth is short, and we haven't much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be quick to love, make haste to be kind, and remember God is infinitely more concerned with our future than with our past. And may the blessing of this God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, we sing your praises, all our hearts are filled.